822, welcome back to Good Day Columbia. You know, ignoring qualifications, a lousy cover letter, sending the wrong cover letter to the wrong employer, bad grammar, spelling, believe it or not, these are all things that bosses see from potential candidates. There are also things that can be avoided, right, Lori Cook? That's right, that's right. I can't believe, how do you, it, and I've seen, like, you know, I've seen cover letters where, like, uh, you know, it's the wrong employer. You're sending out, like, 20 of right. them, and you inadvertently send, uh, you know, the wrong cover letter to the wrong employer. Hey, I can't wait to work for the great team at, at you know, Lori's House of Pancakes. And you're right. like, well, actually, I'm Susan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or they'll say, I can't wait to be and it's the wrong job title right. or whatever. So, right. yeah. And everybody comes to the uh, Business and Job Center and says, I just need that generic cover letter that I no, can send out. No, that's not right, is it? And there's no generic cover. There's okay. really no generic resume either. Now, if you're applying for lots of the same kinds of jobs, then you right. may not have to make very many changes on your resume, but really everything needs to be super targeted. Sure. So I read an article recently. It was one of the um, talent managers for Publix Supermarket. Mm -hmm. So it's always great to hear from the employers what drives you crazy. And these are the things she said. It's the bad grammar, you know, can, spelling, that kind of thing, because if you... There's no excuse to have mm -hmm. bad grammar, bad spelling on a resume. Right. I mean, gosh, Cover letter. Yeah, but remember your application as well. Mm -hmm. Like when, especially if you're filling out online, it does matter if you have it all spaced together, or, there's, you know, or you have it all lower caps and they can't read it. It right. needs to be clear. Think about it this way. They're getting like maybe 100 applications, and they're having to go through them. They're sure. looking for reasons to screen you out. So it could be that you have some crazy email like hotsexymama at yahoo.com or something like that. Or Oh, you know her. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a real address, by the way. <laughs> Don't email it. It probably is, but God knows who it is. Right. And they're looking for those things, and they're seeing if you're taking the job seriously. Plus, if your cover letter is full of fluff and it doesn't say anything, I'm looking for a job. or looking forward to working at a company where I can grow and use my skills. Okay, what skills, what right. talents, what accomplishments, why would I want to hire you? Mm -hmm. And people tend to want to just kind of be generic and vague, and it doesn't work anymore. What about uh, references? I mean, obviously, you don't, you know, I know you don't put the references that will provide, right. uh, you know, will or whatever, but your references really, they need to be more than just your uncle or your, you know, your buddy John down the street. You yeah. need to really have some heavy hitters, right? Yeah, and really what you want is at least three professional references. Mm -hmm. But remember, they don't have to be your former supervisors. Right. They can be your colleagues. They can be your customers. But they should be people that actually can know you, too, though, not just some, I, I, met, I met the judge at a cocktail party. He'll give me a good reference. Right. Yeah, and not only that, but you should send them a copy of your resume and highlight what it is that you want them to talk mm -hmm. about. Do you want them to talk about the fact that you come in on time every day? Do you want them to talk about um, how you're creative and you finish right. that project, tell them what they want, what you want them to talk about and what you feel like they can express sure. for you. Because and there's nothing wrong with that by prepping your references? That's not a, that's not a bad thing? Absolutely not. And think okay. about it. If, if I'm a reference or you're a reference, wouldn't you rather have that than just a phone call out of the blue? Yeah. Let me know what's going on, where you are, what kind of jobs you're going for so that I can prepare. You, yeah, that is important. You should lift nothing else. You should always tell your reference mm -hmm. that you're using them as a reference. Yeah. If nothing else, say, hey, by the way, you might get a call from Lori's House of Pancakes. Right. Because it's not natural for us to do that kind of thing either. As, as, as unnatural as it feels to ask yeah. somebody for a reference, it's unnatural to be a reference. So you want to be prepared for that. And, and they may need to find out what they can say about you legally. Sure. So, you know, you, you definitely want to get your references prepared and have those uh, good references, not mm -hmm my grandma and my brother, but good professional references. Tell me the difference between, because I mean, we, we talk a lot about the fact that you no longer have a job for 25 years, get a gold watch when you retire. You do have several different careers, but job hopping is not good. So tell me, where's the, where's the balance between making career moves and just bouncing? Yeah, it's a, that's a really difficult one. And sometimes you can explain it in your cover letter or the way that you write your resume, mm -hmm. but there's a difference between moving up and progressing or, or moving careers because you're young, maybe you know you had three jobs while you were in high school. It's right. a little different than when you've had three jobs in a row with, you know, the, when you're in your 30s or 40s. Sure. So um, have an explanation for it, but you have to realize that that is a potential screening you out. They mm -hmm. are looking for those things. But a cover letter is a great way. But if to you can show it. a progression, like if you're mm -hmm. a, if you're a cashier and you just worked three months at one at Kroger and Publix and then right. Food Lion, that's more like you're jumping because you haven't personal issue rather than I went from a cashier at Publix to a front-end manager at Food Lion mm -hmm. to the general manager at right. Walmart. That seems to be a better progression. Right, or right? was the job hopping from Columbia to Orangeburg sure. to Charlotte, you know, because you're moving because you're in school or you're following your parents or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there, there's always reasons for the job hopping. We just need to be aware that it does throw up a red flag okay. to employers, so we want to make sure that we address it and have an answer for it, especially if we get that, that, um, that interview.
Sure, perfect. Of course, Lori Cook with the Richland Library and the Job Business Center. Free training for all this stuff, and I think you're right. probably happy to screen cover letters and resumes Absolutely. to make sure that they're looking good. Absolutely. Um, and again, free services. You don't have to be a member of the library or even a member of a resident of Richland County. You can stop by, make an appointment with Lori, and she'll take care of you right as rain for free and hopefully get you back to work, or if you're working now, maybe in your next big gig. Be yes, fantastic. exactly. Right. Lori Cook, thank you very much for coming yes. in. As always, we'll put links in watch.com. Stick around. There's a lot more. Good day, Columbia, on the way. And I'm going to bet you and I, we don't want to miss it.